Hello everyone. Lately we've been seeing Magnus Carlsen winning a lot of online games using some very strange and often dubious openings, which he is somehow able to make work for him as his opponents are seemingly caught off guard and are simply unable to refute these openings properly. Even though Magnus almost always does give them some drawing chances or even winning chances along the way, which sometimes they take advantage of, but usually not. But what would these games look like if they were not tainted by these inaccuracies from Carlson? What if Carlson's brain could be enhanced with AI so that he could play these weird openings perfectly? Well, that is what you are about to see. While we can't enhance Carlson's brain with AI, what we can do is give Stockfish a Carlson-esque opening book full of strange moves and then force it to play these moves against a strong opponent, in this case, fellow computer engine and true giant of computer chess, Komodo version 14. So that's what I have done and let me tell you, the resulting game does not disappoint. This is a true masterpiece, which we are going to delve into right now. Stockfish with the white pieces is compelled to play h4, which is a favorite online weapon of Carlson's lately. Komodo responds sensibly and centrally with e5. Now c4 from Stockfish, it's looking like sort of a reverse Sicilian. We got knight c6, knight c3, knight f6, and g3, solidifying the h4 pawn, getting ready to fianchetto the bishop. We have bishop to c5, good developing move, eyeing the sensitive f2 square. Now bishop to g2, castles. We have a3 from Stockfish, looking for some expansion with b4, which would hit the bishop. Now a5 is a good move here to prevent that, but Komodo just plays d6. He doesn't mind if b4 comes because the bishop can move to d4, looking to maybe take out the knight on c3. So Stockfish plays e3 to deprive that square from the bishop. And now a5 still not played from Komodo. Instead, bishop to b6, Stockfish expands with b4, and now a5, looking to open up a file for the rook. So Stockfish shuts that down by pushing the pawn further to b5, hitting the knight, which drops back to e7. Now there's nothing better to do than to just develop the knight to f3, get ready to castle. We have c6 from Komodo, a little pressure on b5, also supports a potential d5 at some point in the future. Good move. Stockfish castles, rook to e8, nothing too exciting yet. We got d3, a little extra coverage of the e4 square so that the f3 knight won't get kicked with that move. Bishop to f5, a nice post for the bishop, hitting d3. Covering e4, maybe that pawn will be pushed. Now rook to b1. Placing that rook on the same diagonal as this bishop here. Very interesting. And this prompts e4 from Komodo. This is a decent move because after knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, this now comes with an attack on the undefended rook so that white doesn't have any time to do anything aggressive like knight to g5 and attack that bishop. And it seems that the rook just needs to be moved. But Stockfish plays bishop b2, offering the exchange, which Komodo gladly takes him up on. Bishop takes b1. And after queen takes b1, what has Stockfish gotten out of this? Well, he's got his bishop and queen bearing down on Komodo's king side. The knight can join in the attack in a moment with knight to g5, so Komodo decides I better shut that down with h6. But now queen to a1, double attack on g7. Okay, no big deal, we got f6 to deal with that. But look who now has a lot of weakened light squares around their king. So guess which piece Stockfish is wanting to get into the action next? Yep, the light squared bishop, bishop to h3. Maybe looking to come into e6. Komodo doesn't want that, plays knight to c8 so that the rook can watch over that square. This is really the only stable square for the knight. If you were to go to g6, it would get kicked with h5. Now we have queen to b1, looking to get the queen active on the light squares, maybe come into g6. Queen to c7, prepares to challenge Stockfish's queen right away if she were to go there with queen to f7. Now bishop to d4 from Stockfish. A little pressure now along this file here because it can be opened at any moment with b takes c6. So Komodo decides to get his bishop off of that file with bishop to c5, hitting a3, which Stockfish just ignores and plays rook to d1, now sacking a pawn, which Komodo grabs with bishop takes a3. So what are you doing here as white? You're in exchange and a pawn down. 
Well, I'll tell you what you do. If you are AI enhanced Carlson, you sack more. Bishop takes F6. Does this really work? Well, in order to answer that, we better look at the most obvious response from black. G takes F6, which was not played in the game. But what would happen? Well, Stockfish is giving queen G6 check. The king moves. We grab a pawn with check. And after the queen blocks, it says the game should end in a draw, like so. White grabs another pawn with check. The queen blocks. And after another check, king to G8, you get the knight involved with knight to G5. And at the end of the day, what's going to happen is you're going to get the bishop involved, the king goes to h8, and then you're going to play queen to g4. Looking to come in here to h5, we can't allow that. That would be devastating, so black should prevent that with queen to g6. And then we just have a repetition with queen d4 check, the queen blocks, queen back to g4, threatening this again. And that's what Stockfish says should happen. The game should end in a draw. But Komodo obviously didn't like something in that line, and instead played something much worse. He played a losing move queen to f7, which looks kind of reasonable. You're covering the g6 square, right? We could maybe take out the bishop next, but this gives Stockfish a single crushing move. Bishop takes g7. And do you think Komodo captures that bishop? No, he does not. Because if you do, with let's say queen takes g7, or king takes g7, white is going to have the same crushing response, rook to d4. Looking to come into g4, and then g6, and this is not going to end well. So Komodo, seeing that that is a very dangerous line, decides to take a different piece. Does not capture the bishop, but instead captures the knight on f3, which is available. Okay, queen takes f3. But after rook to d4, this is really no better for black, because despite the fact that he can now grab the bishop on g7 with king takes g7, being now two pieces up, his king is nevertheless horribly exposed while most of his pieces are inactive and sidelined. Stockfish's attack rages on with rook to g4 check, a move which convinces Komodo that it's time to give up the queen. Queen takes g4 is what's played, but let's look at the obvious response, king to h8, and why this fails. Here Stockfish would have rook to f4, and where's this queen going to go? You really got to keep the queen out of g6, that's going to be curtains. So queen to h5, but now bishop to g4. You can't cover g6 anymore. If you go, let's say, queen e5, here comes queen g6. And the engine is giving queen to e7 so that after rook f7, threatening mate here is played, then the queen can just give herself up like this. So Komodo, apparently seeing that line, decides it's best to give up the queen here, right off the bat, with queen takes g4. And we have bishop takes g4. And though Komodo is still up in material here, he will not be able to survive Stockfish's attack, despite the fact that he only has a queen and a bishop left. And you might be surprised by Komodo's next move, rook to f8, just giving up a piece, the bishop on a3, after queen to a1 check, rook f6, and then the queen grabs on a3. So let's back up a minute and see what would have happened if that bishop would have just moved out of danger with like bishop to c5. What's the issue there? Well, you got queen b2 check, the king moves, and then the queen will infiltrate to f6. You got bishop to f5 coming, which is very dangerous. If you try knight to e7, well, bishop to d7 is going to win material. So because this position looked so bad, Komodo decided it was best to just get the rook on f8, give up the bishop, puts the rook on f6, blocks the check, the queen takes on a3, and now at least the knight can develop to e7. Komodo has two rooks for the queen. White has an extra pawn, so the material is roughly equal, but there is no hope for black here. Stockfish starts pushing the e-pawn, looking to go to e5. If that pawn were to be captured, you're losing the knight on e7. So Komodo decides to get that knight out of the way. Knight to g8. And why it moved the knight here instead of the more active g6, I don't know. It all loses anyway. c5 now from Stockfish. Very nice move. Looking to eliminate the d-pawn so that after d takes c5, the e-pawn can be pushed to e5 without being captured. It's a powerful pass pawn now. It also hits the rook, which moves to f7. Now b takes c6, b takes c6, and the queen grabs on c5. Now we have a4 from Komodo. A desperate bid to create a threat with the pass pawn, but he will never get the chance. Bishop to e6 hits the rook. The rook goes to c7. Now queen d6 hits the rook again. The rooks double up behind the passed pawn. But bishop a2 is there to block the pawn's progress. Now king to h8. Just trying to get a little safer, I guess. c6 falls. And now we've reached a situation where Komodo's a pawn is never going to promote. 
And Stockfish is just going to continue to advance his past E and F pawns. So I'm gonna go through the rest of these moves quickly just so you can see how it went down. What ends up happening is Stockfish is able to advance his pawn to E6, defended by the bishop, and eventually Komodo will double up his rooks in front of the pawn. His A pawn falls, and at this point, seeing that Stockfish is just going to advance the F pawn next, and that these rooks will be no match for the connected pass pawns, Komodo decides to just take out the pawn on E6 now. We have Queen D4 check, it's blocked, and then there goes the rook. And after rook takes E6, and g4, Komodo resigns. Seeing that the rook and knight are simply no match for Stockfish's queen and two extra pawns. So there we have it, the destruction of a much stronger player than any human you will see Magnus defeat online by the ultimate chess foe, our simulated AI-enhanced Magnus Carlsen, creating a brilliant game out of a strange, unconventional opening while redefining what we thought we knew about how to play the opening. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.